It's Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. in Switzerland. It's Space Cafe Web Talk time. Our Space Cafe Web Talk, 33 minutes with Fahad Al Mary, will begin soon. And Fahad, you can correct me if I um, mispronounce your, your last name. You did well Thanks. there. Thanks. Mary. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this very informative and definitely very inspiring talk about the UAE space economy from a vision to reality. As always, we appreciate your participation and your ongoing feedback. I'm Thorsten Kreening, your host today and publisher of spacewatch.global. We are a Switzerland-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and daily newsletters, and the Space Cafe podcast. The episode 12 featuring Chris Lee is live on all major podcast, podcast platforms, so worth listening if you like space as we do. We also opened our fan shop online where you can support us actively and become a space watcher. Edition one has cool mugs, masks, and awesome t-shirts, as you can see here after me, for you, for your friends, and the ones you love. Your support is needed to keep our independent journalism alive. I can't repeat it enough. We need your support for what we do for you. If you have missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our web page in the event section and on YouTube. We host our Space Cafe web talks live on weekly base. This is already our 28th edition. I hope you mark Tuesdays at the same time in your calendar. Today, I'm very honored to be joined by a very inspiring person, Fahad Al Mary. Welcome to the show. Fahad is, an, is the acting our executive director of the space sector at the UAE Space Agency and oversees the agency's contribution to overall space sector growth. He is responsible to oversee both the Space Mission Management and the Policy and Regulation Directorate. Fahad drives the agency's strategic objectives with regards to space mission and policy through local and international collaboration and partnerships, focusing on the core pillars of industry growth and academia development. He chairs both internal and external committees, most notably the 2030 UAE Space Sector Strategy, along with several international coordination groups. Before joining the UAE Space Agency, Fahad was the Executive Director of Business Development at the Emirates Defense Institute co company, EDIC, a um, holding of 16 local defense companies. He also acted as the URE shareholder representative for numerous international joint ventures and internationally owned companies where he provided insight and guidance to enhance support of EDIX vision. And now something very important for all the students and listeners at the beginning of their careers. He started his career as an oil field engineer working for Schlumberger in Brazil before working with the Dubai executive office where he developed a sustainable operations business model for the Mohammed bin Rashid School of Government. Fahad received a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Boston University in the UAE. And today he is in the space sector. So it's not always a, a straight line to join the space sector, just as an advice. With that, I'm very proud to welcome you, Fahad, in my show. Thank you, Tostin. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. And I think it's been a long time since I've received such a long introduction. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that's one of the beauty that we are just alone. It's just you and me here. So not a panel where you have to share with, with 20 other people. So let's kick that off, Fahad. What excites you about space and the space sector? Well, I mean, like you said, Tostin, I, I didn't start at the space sector, you know, I mean, there's so many things that, you know, I'm really not sure where to start. I mean, space exploration is space exploration. You know, it's a fascinating dream. You know, we've all watched space movies and we've all stared up at the skies in wonder. And I, I think one of the things that I, I will never forget, uh, when I was in high school, I had a friend who was um, 
because of his father's status, he was able to to get the uh, you know the Estes model rockets that uh, you can get in any hobby store, I guess, in the U.S. Because you can't get these things here in the UAE; it's legal. You can't even get fireworks here. So I remember when we had gotten this, and you know, I was always. Uh, you know, going into the technical aspects of things and he had no clue. So he called me up and he was like, yeah, we're going to go to the farm. We've got these. I don't know how to use them. I'm sure you can figure it out. And I remember we launched three, four of these rockets. And I still remember that, you know, we was probably like 13, 14 years old at the time, you know, and uh, since then, you know, space has just been a very far thing and never, ever thought I'd be joining the space sector at all. Last year, though, during the same time, you know, the schools were all buzzing with excitement about Hazar al-Mansouri with his mission to the ISS. And the schools at the time had a week session. Again, it was sort of a space week in schools and everybody had to work on projects. On, um, you know, Friday morning, my son comes to me, seven years old at the time, and he asked for my help to build a model rocket. He said that we have to build something for school. I thought, okay, well, you know, is that what you want to do? A model rocket? Do you want it to fly? You know, he looked at me. He's like, no, Baba, of course not. You know, how can we make it fly? Uh, I looked at him. I was like, Baba's an engineer. Don't forget that. <laughs> and he's like, so what are you going to do? I said, okay. So I looked at my wife and I said, do we have any plans the rest of the day? She said, it's all yours. Take care of it. So within 24 hours, I, you know, we designed, made, tested, and, and, and launched a rocket. And I can tell you it was all from scratch. We didn't have the model rockets. We had to make up the chemistry. And on top of that, I uh, made a five minute video as well where he was actually presenting this because I couldn't expect him to take this to school, right? So uh, I didn't know if it was gonna explode or what was gonna happen. So, you know, that really sparked so much on that side. And, and this was, I would say five months uh, before uh, the, the space agency was even something that, uh, that came through. And to be honest, I haven't stopped there. I think if you see behind me, I've got 3D printed parts now and I've uh, almost perfected my own, uh, you know, sorbitol, uh, let's say sugar fuel mix. Uh, and, and so I've been having lots of fun with that since. And uh, so, yeah, you know, it was, uh, I guess, four months after that, uh, uh, an opportunity came up at the agency. And I would have to say, thank the leadership and the government. And of course the DG, Dr. Ahbabi, uh, you know, for giving me the opportunity uh, that I have here today at the agency, you know, and, and yeah. having really experienced work in various sectors throughout my career, what I really appreciate is how space has managed to bring humankind together. I mean, the personalities and the goals are all aligned and the visions and targets, you know, the people are happy to share, network, partner, you know, because everyone understands nobody can go at this alone and it needs great people to make things happen in space. And we have the young talents, passionate people, students, academia, government, private sector, industry experts, all working together. And that is happening in unity today in the UAE and something I saw very quickly when I joined just eight months ago. That's great. That could stand as final words already. So, uh, but <laughs> I would like to dig into it a bit more. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you talked about the, uh, the, the aspiration. Um, but let's start. I mean, I had the great pleasure to talk with uh, Salam Al Mari from the MRSC uh, a few months back, uh, just mm -hmm. after the successful launch uh, of the uh, Emirates mission um, to, to Mars. So, can you give us an overview? view what happened in the in the meantime because i mean we see and and we are space press so we cover we try to cover as many stories as possible but the flood of information coming from the uae is, is even for us quite overwhelming so maybe you can wrap it what's going on uh, in the uae especially uh, from the perspective of the agency right now well you know you mentioned you spoke to him after the launch you know i mean so since of course uh, um, I'm not sure. I guess China had also already launched at that time, and I think we were still waiting for Perseverance to launch. So, uh, I mean, I think it is a, a great story to see three countries today sharing the journey to the Red Planet, you know. And, uh, and by the way, for all of you that are listening, the Red Planet is absolute great visible these days. So he yes. is as close as... An, yeah, he can be. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it's very shiny. I mean, I've... Oh, I've yeah taking pictures with my own mobile phone, you can catch a full moon and you can catch a very shiny Mars. So yeah. I agree with that. 
So, I mean, at that time as well, I was um, really in touch with the Umran, uh, shut off the project director, you know, yeah, because so, yeah. I had to report aspects in as well to the board and things like that. And I had the honor of uh, being part of the, uh, not the main SRB, but the discussions that happened around the SRBs. And, you know, I can say that um, things have gone really well, uh, very smoothly since launch. Uh, the team had been working about a month and a half uh, directly, 24 hours a day. Uh, two 12-hour shifts, uh, communicating, testing systems, and running all the checks that had to be checked. Uh, I believe they've had uh, two course uh, uh, correction maneuvers already successfully taken place, and uh, they're currently at the crew stage, you know. So um, uh, the one thing is as well what we've been working on, um, if, you, if you want to track what's been happening and where it is and how far it is, I think we're today like at the 79th day since launch. You can actually go to... Uh, www.emm.ae that's the uh, emm.ae and you can actually track now we have uh, a little simulator which has uh, the speed of the probe okay. how far away it is and all of that so uh, it's a great thing for anybody who wants to take a look and there will be more and more information coming on that but since the launch we've also had some change in management at the agency so yeah. i'm sure you've heard the news that so we have a new chairmanship at the agency uh, and today we're honored to have Her Excellency Sara Al-Amiri, who is the chair of the Council of Scientists and the deputy manager of the Emirates Mars mission. And she's also the Minister of State for Advanced Technology. So her now is our chairman. She really brings a deep look at matters regarding space, which we're really welcoming at the agency. Um, you know, and you can imagine it's the end of the year. Uh, our Vision 2021 National Agenda plans are coming to a close. You know, the government is now looking to the future, new deliverables, new initiatives, and you know, space is high up on the agenda in terms of growth and expectations. So the agency has really been working hard since inception, you know, and has really put down a very strong foundation uh, with the UAE space policy, the UAE space law, and of course, the National Space Strategy 2030 you mentioned. And we've also been working on regulations and strategies to support the growth of the sector together with our space investment promotion plan and the, uh, the, the Global Space Industry Accelerator Program, which uh, you, I believe, kindly moderated uh, during one of our sessions. So, you know, and, and since then, we've really successfully laid down that infrastructure. And, and now with such ambition and inspiring projects ongoing, uh, yeah, I'm sure you've heard of the new release as well uh, that... Uh, came out recently from our prime minister, you know, and, and there's, so, there's so many exciting things that are happening in the space realm here in the UAE. And we really want to support the growth of the sector by creating, you know, an inviting ecosystem to support the growth of startups, encourage entrepreneurs and really pull together the amazing existing facilities we have here in the UAE mm -hmm. to focus on space. You know, a big success also just came along just last week, uh, Mesensat, another milestone yeah. achievement for the UAE highlighting the UAE's ambition again to embrace space. So it was just on the 28th of September, just last week, as I mentioned. You know, the first 3U environmental nanosatellite developed in the UAE by 30 university students. That was successfully uh, launched uh, from Russia, two payloads on it, um, a shortwave infrared spectrometer and RGB mm -hmm. digital camera, uh, and tasked to monitor uh, methane and carbon dioxide concentrations. So this is, of course, considered to be two of the most uh, prevalent greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and, you know, which contribute to climate change. So this is something that we're taking a look at. So we're really proud, you know, at the UAE Space Agency uh, for, for the support that they've offered the universities and the capability growth and the opportunity uh, that this has put together with the support of Khalifa University. And it was the American University of Ras al-Khaimah as well. It took 30 students, you know, and allowed them to really live through the design, yeah. development, testing, verification of the satellite over a period of three years, you know, and now they've launched it. And uh, it, it's great because these same students are now almost system engineers, right? Absolutely. Something that would have taken any engineer in real life 10 years to realize in the real world. And they've also set up their own ground station and they've established that and it's enabling them to communicate with, monitor and operate the mission from there. So, so and, and those kids can go home and, and, and tell their father, say, hey, dad, I have something in space. And you, you can play you with your rockets here at, on Earth. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah, my kids still have some time to grow. So I think, I, I think they'll be launching their own satellites before they even go to university. The pace it looks like it's going right yeah. now. <laughs> But, you know, the, the foundations that have been put in place with the academics yeah. uh, is, is amazing. And, and the focus on human resources in the past has been amazing. And. And this is where we're really now inspiring and, and hope uh, 
um, you know, to, to motivate the youth of the world, you know, inspiring projects, you know, that are the great leadership really in this country have envisioned and delivered. And, and we want to now make sure that we have some real opportunities for students, for entrepreneurs, for uh, people with, you know, this passion and inspiration to really come. Yeah. And so for us, it's going to be a big focus on the students and facilitate wherever possible to help them and other entrepreneurs across the world look at the UAE as a destination to take up a challenge to build up a company and become part of the UAE space sector. That's really where our focus is going to be now moving forward. Let's, let's dig into a few of these programs because the topic is the growth of the UAE um, space ecosystem. Let's start with the Pan-Arabic view. I mean, one of the Pan-Arabic initiatives is the Arab Space Cooperation Group uh, and their satellite project. I mean, you mentioned uh, your, your boss, um, my good friend, Dr. Alababi, is one of the visionaries of these initiatives. Um, can you give us, please, a status of that initiative and, and the project, of course, because, hey, it's your own uh, multispectral satellite, hyperspectral, not Michael, hyperspectral satellite. So, Yeah, I mean, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, that is, you know, it, it's something that's showing that, you know, our leadership are not only thinking about the UAE, you know, they've mm -hmm. always... Uh, been concerned and are always involving the greater Arab world. And yes, of course, as you mentioned, our DG you know, has been an icon, uh, you know, to this initiative and the international space domain. Uh, and, and the UAE, of course, yes, has achieved so much, but it can do so much more if other Arab countries were also striving for the same. You know, multiple countries and governments working together can achieve so much more than one, and it's all about mm -hmm. collaboration to do more. Um, it, just like what happened in Europe, right? The UAE is a small, young country, but you know, one that is definitely making an impact and punching above, above its weight class. But the Arabs, uh, you know, the, the Arab Space Cooperation Group is an initiative, really. It was set up in March 2019 mm -hmm. um, and is being led by the UAE today uh, under consensus by the 14 Arab countries that uh, are involved today. And the group is really working towards consolidating the strength and capabilities of the Arab world in order to enhance its contribution to the global space sector and space science research and development. You know, it, it, it comes to space, the, the investment is, is heavy, you know, and, and the fruits and results, uh, even though have a huge impact, do take time to capitalize on. And, you know, as I mentioned, Europe saw this, um, uh, as many of their countries wanted to get involved, but having everyone uh, in isolation was extremely difficult and it was very expensive to bear. So when this was consolidated, this is what allowed the space sector to become sustainable. So... The vision of the Arab Space Cooperation Group is really to ensure cooperation on the advancement and leadership in space across the Arab region. And, and they have a mission to establish you know, more uh, space agencies in the Arab region um, and perhaps maybe even in the future have an Arab space agency, right? And, and this, could, uh, you know, this will all lead to the development of joint sustainable space programs and it aims to supporting the development of space capabilities um, you know, and really inspire science research um, it, it'll push the aspect of education, inspiration, mm -hmm. developing the competencies in the Arab world, uh, and, and really create awareness, uh, promote uh, member participation in global space forums as well. So we have quite a few working groups today um, that are uh, active within the, the team. And, you know, we're, we're looking at policies, we're looking at legislations, um, what, you know, needs to be looked at and created, uh, promoting a harmonization of the space legislation. Uh, as well as really, you know, coordination of the Arab position and the Arab participation to relevant international forums, decisions regarding policies and those legislations. So we have um, a team as well where we're looking at some scientific research aspect, mm -hmm. potential space project. As you mentioned, the Arab Satellite Project 813, uh, you know, and we're coordinating research and development programs around it. And uh, a big focus is, of course, on space education, training, outreach. So there's a lot there that a lot of different countries are doing. Uh, today, for instance, we had a meeting with, uh, with uh, the government of Iraq and the, the, the team there, and you know, exchanging views, exchanging knowledge and, and some capabilities and uh, you know, interests uh, on either side. So you know, we're really looking at that. And I think we're really very proud of our Arab heritage you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to space, science, uh, you know, mathematics, and, you know, today we really seek to revive that potential again, but together as well, you know, and all the recent projects the UAE has invested in are really dedicated to the Arabs of the world. 
you know, mm -hmm. you will see that, uh, that, you know, it is all towards the Arabs. Uh, from EMM to Hazza al Mansouri uh, to the new uh, rover, uh, all of these are dedicated to the Arabs, you know, and it's really, you know, the UAE is, is building on the legacy of the Arab world's contribution. And, you know, that is making all things space a possibility today. So it's going back to those roots. Okay. And I'm, I'm happy that you sp spun it or opened his wings are because I would like to talk about the Arab Space Pioneer Program. And I know that's something what is very close to your heart. So it seems that is one of these programs where you are looking for the next Ibn Battuta. You know, the next icon are not to name just an, a mall behind him, but just to have somebody with, with this heritage and with this explorer gene. So um, this, this program seems to be one of the vibrant, most vibrant pro, um, activities that, that we are observing. Can you please tell us more about it? Yes, of course. So, you know, the Arab Space Pioneer Program. This was uh, actually, you know, it's just another wonderful initiative that, that showcase, you know, our space program is not only for the UAE, you know, it is there for the Arab world. And mm -hmm. His Highness, uh, you know, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid uh, announced this initiative uh, under the administration of the UAE Space Agency. And it happened um, on the, the 4th of July in parallel with the anticipated EMM Hope probe launch. Um, you know, and the aim is really to offer opportunities to a very select number of applicants to become a part of what the UAE nationals are experiencing in the UAE today and be part of the Arab space history that is getting written every day here in the UAE. So the registration was only open for about 10 days. I believe it was from the 4th of July um, you know, and, and uh, we closed it, I think, on the 14th of July, and we received over 37,000 applicants. It was overwhelming. Um, you know, we were not expecting that number. Uh, we had to change the plans. And, you know, since we became the, the administers of it, we had to figure out how we can manage this and, and drive it forward. And, you know, because of this, uh, the number of applicants, it became clear that you know this is something that, that the world needs you know that the arab world needs and so what we did is we we've actually um broken the program down into three tracks the expert track the graduate track and the talent track so the expert track is really based on a registration process today for those who had applied to the program of course it's just within those 37 38,000 uh, applicants and where we're creating a database of experienced Arab engineers or technicians, scientists, R&D experts, whatever it is, that could support space or related technologies, um, you know, around the industry, you know, and, and these people are expected to already hold experience, um, you know, in space or, 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 you know, relevant experience and skills to be able to support the UAE uh, with, you know, where it wants to go. So we have very limited space industry here in the UAE, you know, but there are many existing industries that can support the sector who are now getting involved in the program. And this is part of what the UAE Space Agency mm -hmm. is doing by networking all of these. So the database of these Arab experts will be shared among these industry, industries who want to support the initiative uh, and which would open up opportunities for those Arabs to gain op uh, opportunities. You know, it could be through consultancies, it could be through advisories, contracts, even employments, or however the industry sees the need, you know. And this really offers opportunities for these experts to become part of the current and future space projects that the UAE has to offer. Um, it can include Wait, anything. That, just to, to yeah. uh, let me ask this or again, we are talking about Arabs uh, globally or yes. only just Emiratis, no Arabs? No. Okay. No, I see Emiratis. We, we have different programs already running for Emiratis, right? Yeah. So the government has always been pushing to support Emiratis. And, and this is actually opening up to Arabs across the world. So as long kind as of. you hold uh, uh, the Arab, you know, a nationality of an Arab country, uh, you know, you can have access. Even if you hold a dual citizenship, uh, you know, in a, but you have, uh, you're, you're part of an Arab country, uh, you can become part of this, you know. So um, but going back to the expert track, you know, it really, it could include anything from manufacturing, mm -hmm. electrical design, R&D, and, and all, of course, the downstream services that, you know, utilizing the big data that's available nowadays um, to be transformed, you know, into services across the region mm -hmm. and, of course, the world. So that's the expert track. Then you have the graduate track. So the graduate track, we've actually tied back 
uh, to universities here in the UAE. So we have three different universities today that are offering space programs. We have, I think, five new ones, and there's probably two more that are coming up, but five space-related uh, programs in the master's and then the PhD uh, aspects. And, and this is where universities have dedicated a full scholarship seat to Arab mm -hmm. students to come to the UAE. And we've received 10 seats from the UAE University. They're the first ones to jump on this opportunity, which are supporting this track. We had, so we opened up a very separate registration just for people through the university to go and apply. And we had an astonishing 1,300 applicants uh, coming into that program and 900 of who have actually passed the criteria to receive a full scholarship. So it's going to be a fun time now to try and bring those down to, to the, let's say maybe 10 or 12 seats, the maximum, you know, but um, that program is looking to start in January. So uh, the, I guess not the spring, so the spring of 2021. So beginning January, 2021. Uh, we also have the Mohammed bin Zayed uh, University of Artificial Intelligence. They've also opened registration, uh, but uh, this will be for uh, the fall of 2021. And so the registration there has started. We don't have any numbers yet, but uh, we really look forward to see that and, and for the people to join. So it's really exciting on that aspect. And, you know, as, as the program grows year after year, hopefully there's more that can be done and, and more we can support. So uh, the last track is the talent track, and this is aimed at students from uh, grade 10 to 13, mm -hmm. um, and it's really prior to university. So we're looking at no more than 15 participants, and this is where the focus is really to grab the students when they were young, like when I was, right? Uh, and I saw my first rocket launch from my hands, you know? This is really where true inspiration and passion can be fueled so easily. So we're looking at engaging with them virtually because they're gonna be in high schools, wherever they are across the world. But we also want to see how we can get them engaged in possible winter camps here in the UAE and maybe offer them opportunities, summer camps uh, outside uh, the UAE. You know, we have partners all around the world that we've done this with. So it could really lead to an interesting, you know, ecosystem in the future in this. So, you know, we're seeking for, for the prodigy in space, really, from the Arab world, you know, and, and give them the opportunity uh, to fulfill their dreams, really, through this program. So it's all about reaching for the stars, and we're looking at giving them that opportunity. Great. I mean, that, that sounds very exciting. I mean, with all the initiatives um, you, you just mentioned, um, so how does the UAE Space Agency now grow this space, local space sector? Because, I mean, you're now on the talent side with this program. And, but, I mean, how do you bring in companies to the, to the UAE? I mean, or, um, there was the 100% uh, owner, foreign ownership or thing that, that's on the table now. Is this all now ratified and can be executed? Or so where do we stand on that? Yes, uh, very good point. And that is definitely what we've really been focusing on now. You know, mm -hmm. the, as I mentioned, the groundwork is in place and we are now focusing on the space investment plan, yeah. the national space strategy and the new GSIA framework to accelerate the growth. You know, and, and we have wonderful facilities here in the UAE that already exist. And we'll be focusing on driving the partnerships that we already have with those to really support and taking the space sector to the next level. So, you know, as you mentioned, yes, this 100% ownership it is on the table, but of course it has certain criteria and requirements and we have yeah. to go back to the DED for each of those cases. But if there is a huge potential case and something that really merits, they will give us the- um, What is the DED? Know, the, uh, the Department of Economic Development. Okay. Yep, so we've been working with them. We've created activities now throughout the UAE. So we have a long list of activities based on space activities. So things are clear. And you know, when you come back to what I was mentioning regarding the hubs, I mean, we have Hub 71, ADIO, ADGM, mm -hmm. DIFC, Khalifa Fund, Dubai SME, uh, you know, uh, Shira, Sandur al Watlan, Khalifa Fund, ICT, uh, you know, Crypto Labs, MBRC. All of these are offering opportunities, you know, for incubation, entrepreneurs, and startups. And you know, we've seen this firsthand: uh, the interest of the people in and around the UAE to get involved. And you know, space is not so far away anymore. Mm -hmm. You know access to space has become a lot cheaper. More and more cuts are available. So commercial off the shelf, you know, uh, parts are, are available. And it's all about the ability to conjure up an, a great idea, really, you know, and that's the worry now. It's not about the technology and it's not really about the cost like it was in the past. And 
we've seen high school students, uh, you know, not in the UAE, but outside, manage to put together CubeSats, you know? So it, it shows the space sector, yes, it will still, for now, still be driven by government as a catalyst, but, but more and more we have seen, you know, with the amazing feats of SpaceX, you know, that the private sector can do it quicker, can do it cheaper, more effectively and more efficiently. You know, the government needs to take a step back and support the private sector growth in the UAE. And it is really the key for sustainable economy. You know, as I was saying, we, we've seen this firsthand through the GSI webinars, um, you know, and, and that, you know, you, you were a part of it. You know, we, we had almost 500 attendees at these things at the end. And we see the chat boxes blow up with people exchanging ideas, mm -hmm. wanting to meet, wanting to learn more, wanting to make a difference. And it's that enthusiasm that we need to foster. And, and so we did actually, and we launched a competition where we uh, opened up applications and we had 150 applicants that came through uh, that wanted to have a new startup idea. At that time, it was difficult, right? We thought, oh, okay, let's, let's start with this and see how it goes. So we took four uh, of these startups. So, you know, we, we reviewed and we, we took these mm -hmm. down to four startups and it's been amazing. We, we haven't put a single dollar towards them because we just didn't have it at that time. But what we did was we facilitated. We, uh, you know, through crypto labs, we offered them incubation. Yeah. We mentored, we facilitated meetings, uh, we guided them, we advised these entrepreneurs and they were ready to change and absorb whatever it was they heard and they actioned things straight away. And I'm so proud of those four companies that have gone through the stage over the last four months. And, you know, they have had seatings with European angel investors. Uh, they've had, si they've signed MOUs with local and international mm -hmm. partners. And honestly, they're on their way. And right. I couldn't be more proud of this achievement, you know, and we really hope to do more uh, on that next year. Absolutely. We just got a first warning from our production team that we are running over time. But however, it's so exciting. So we just overrule them. So however, um, there are a few more que or two more questions I would like to ask are with, with really the hope of a shorter answer. Um, but I, I think you, you will manage that. So your country, UAE, and by the way, just to mention how close space is, it's a dis distance Dubai Abu Dhabi. That's it, 100 kilometers. So that's, um, so you can drive it every day here. Yeah. So you're wonderful, you're a young country, uh, which will turn 50 years next year, uh, achieved so much. So, but put even the resources in, we talked about 6 billion or uh, was announced yesterday on um, so you created this lighthouse project, the legal framework, all the initiatives you talked about. What is missing? Well, I just want to mention that six billion is actually what has been invested in the UAE space sector since its inception. So mm -hmm. this is not an annual figure in any way, uh, but you know that is the money that has been put forward. And and you know I think the hope is there. You know the inspiration is there. The resources mm -hmm. exist. We do lack a lot of experience, and, and that is just based on how young we are as a nation. But I think through the right models, uh, mechanisms, partnerships, I really believe we can make the UAE a conduit to the space sector. And I think we have all the tools in place. It's really about getting the word out now that we will strive to build up the UAE space economy. So if any of your listeners start in, in you know, have a great concept or an idea or related you know, space companies, they would like to start up or maybe move to the UAE, our doors are open and we would be happy to help. So uh, you know, we welcome that and we look forward to it. I can spot a few people coming in from the World Space Week, uh, which is running uh, these these days. So with St Stephen and uh, I mean, we have also Talal in the audience. So, but ah. he's also an, a good ambassador of, of of the space vision, even now on the artificial intelligence side. My last question is: Where is commercial space in the UAE going to be in the next decade? Are we flying in suborbital to UAE in in ten years? <laughs> <laughs> well, gravity is always against us, you know, so we'll see where that goes. But really, I think, you know, that, you know, when it comes into the commercial aspect, I think that will be the number one ticker to look at when looking mm -hmm. at the UAE in the future. You know, for the space agency, we are really gearing up to facilitate and serve. And that facilitation, we know, will lead to the acceleration of the sector growth. And that will do a lot in developing the UAE space ecosystem, you know, and as mentioned, we cannot do it alone as government. We need the cooperation, we need the partnerships, startups, entrepreneurs, medium-sized companies, anchor entities, 
all of them to come together here to the UAE, which will really make the UAE space sector sustainable. So I think 10 years, it's a, it's a short period of time when you really think about it, but I think there's a lot that can be done in that time. And I look forward to maybe having this discussion with you again in 10 years and let's see uh, what happens. <laughs> I take you on that. Great. Okay. Thank you very, thank you very much. And Priyanka, we have seen your question, and I will answer. I try to give an answer in in the in the upcoming moderation here. So, uh, I'm afraid we have to come to an end because we are are on on our it's our 36 already. Even I would love to our um, to continue this inspiring talk with you. Be sure we will continue to follow up the, the developments in the, in the UAE in our upcoming Space Cafe web talks podcast or in our magazine just some announcements for for you on our thursday this week at 4 p.m we will start our new series of our space cafe moribas vox populi um as we can call them the next level our, um a conversation with uh, professor moriba ja um and he will have that with people from the space environmental our uh, env environmentalism and the space security side a very open talk um, very interesting to follow. And we are not stopping here. On the 12th of November, and I think Priyanka, that, uh, that answers your question, are on 12th of November, we will kick off another special series format, our Space Cafe Black Ops by uh, Ralph Thiele. This will be a focused format on defense, military space, and hybrid warfare. Stay tuned for further information in the, in the next week. So, but don't want to disappoint you we will not disclose anything what is not open information but we will put it into a context so just to be sure our, our next webinars are or my next webinars will be our next week i will talk with juan de dalmao the president of the international space university about space careers and how to find your career in space a week later, on the 20th, I'm looking forward to talking to Professor Ram Jaku, the acting director of the McGill University in Canada, on the need of more space policy and law. Interesting approach or from, from his side. And on 27th, I will uh, talk to um, Australia's, or uh, we'll talk about Australia's space strategy, military space strategy, with Dr. Malcolm Davis especially very proud or as he will be home in or as he as he is home in Canberra for this talk and it will be 1 a.m. as mentioned earlier. All events are online on Eventbrite as always we would like to hear from you your feedback so please check in with us on Twitter on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Don't forget to sign up to our daily or bi-weekly newsletters and if you like to treat yourself with something special become a space watcher. Your support is needed or to help us to continue our independent journalism for the news and these web talks. Take your credit card and visit our fan shop at shop.spacewatch.global. I can't repeat it enough. We need your support to continue our work. Thank you all very much for your interest today and thank you Fahad for this exciting talk and being my guest today. I'm very honored. Thanks to the entire team behind the scene for doing their great job week by week. Again, I hope you all will stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you next week. No, I hope to see you also in two days. Um, in the meantime, visit our website and follow up with us on social media. Don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you very much, Pat. Thank Thanks. you very much, Thomas. That was great.